my high school lover. Run, Jeremy screamed as I heard Mr. Daniel's voice calling out our name. I can't believe I did this. I kissed Jeremy, the hottest boy in front of the principal's office, and now I might get suspended, or worse, expelled for this. But one thing I know is that I will never regret this moment. Flashback, four months before. I left my house an hour early today so I can get some time to study before people come to class. I have one more year to build my portfolio because by this time I want to see myself studying in the top university. It was the first day of our new and last semester. Slowly, everyone started walking in the class as the bell rang. Some looking excited for the new term, whereas some were extra excited because it was going to be the last one. As I noticed everyone walking in, there was a new face. Definitely a good looking one. Already a bunch of girls from my class started talking about him before he even sat. As the teacher entered, everyone greeted him. He then called out the new student and introduced him to everyone. Hi, my name is Jeremy Vins. Hope to get along with everyone, he said casually and sat back at his place, which was two seats behind mine. I rolled my eyes as I saw him, winking at all the girls as he passed by. The period got over pretty soon, and I heard a muffled voice at the back. Nataline, a popular girl, sadly, from my class, went to Jeremy's seat and asked him if he wanted to hang out. Nah, I'm good. I've got my boys to hang around with, he said, making me turn back, and I saw him pointing at both of us. I scoffed. I'm not hanging out with you. I've got other work, I said. Lucas, right? Sorry, buddy, but Professor told me to ask you to show me around, because you're apparently a good kid, he said, chuckling, making me mad. What does he mean by apparently a good kid? Sure, I replied back and got up to show him around the school. It's true that I'm good at school, both academically and in other activities, because I have to in order to get into a good college. Let's go, I told him, walking past him. So, are you a nerd? How do you have good scores? He asked, already making me annoyed. I'm not a nerd. I just know how to study, I said. This is a sports room. On that side is a boy's washrooms, and that's the girl's washroom, in case you're interested. Canteen is outside, and the rest is nothing much to show. You will know on your own, I continued. He placed his arms on my shoulder and came close to me. All right, thanks for the tour. I saw all of it before coming to class anyways, he said, making me look at him. Then why didn't you tell- You wasted my time, I said annoyed. <laughs> it's fun. And just so you know, I'm neither interested in girls nor their washroom, he said, chuckling. And he left me standing there a bit confused. Goodbye, Lucas. So annoying, I thought to myself before heading towards the canteen. A week went by, same with a bunch of girls luring around him, and he stayed playful and casual with them. Just in a few days, his popularity was growing. Girls were drooling over his hotness, and boys were drooling over his bike, which he already changed a few times. One thing was sure that he is least interested in his studies and would probably fail some classes, but he never failed to annoy me by either calling me a nerd or asking me to take him around college. As I was sitting in an English lit class, I received a text from Maria, my neighbor. The text read, Your mom is hospitalized, Lucas. She fainted near her car, but don't worry, she'll be fine soon. As I read the text, I immediately stood up from my seat, gaining everyone's attention. My mind was going blank. I couldn't answer my teacher as well. I just had one thought, which was to reach my mom as soon as possible. I excused myself from class and started rushing. I was stopped by Jeremy asking me what happened and I blurted out, I have to go to the hospital. Okay, I'll take you there, he said, and I nodded, as I have no idea what to do right now. He excused himself from the class as well without caring about asking for permission. I didn't expect any help from him, but he was doing more than expected. He didn't even ask what happened and why I had to go. It's good because I wouldn't be able to explain either. He offered me a helmet and I sat on his bike. Hold tightly, he said, and I kept my hands on his shoulders. He cut all the traffic and we reached in less than 10 minutes, which would be next to impossible. As soon as we reached, I got off and started rushing until he called my name. Hey, helmet. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I walked back to return his helmet. Hey, listen, I don't know who's in there or what happened, but it'll be fine, he said. Thanks, Jeremy, I said, and rushed back in. As I reached, I got to know that my mother suffered from an attack because of hypertension. She had it for a very long time, but it never reached its extent. I thanked Maria for bringing her to the hospital. Thanks, Maria. I don't know what would happen if you weren't there. It's okay, Lucas. I was there and she is fine. Take care of yourself and her, kid, she said, and left. I sat there for a while, waiting for the doctors to let me in. Meanwhile, I thought about what happened today, and it was sweet of him to offer help. I guess I can give him a point for that. The day was soon getting over and I met mom. She was conscious, but she will stay in the hospital for a while. I called my grandmother and asked her if she could come here to stay with my mom while I go to school. She told me not to worry and she will be there. I went back to the room and saw my mother lying there with so many machines surrounding her. It broke my heart to see her that way. 
Here, Mom, drink this, I told her, and I got her some juice to drink. That night I slept next to her. My grandmother woke me up to go to school. I can stay, no problem. No, dear, go to school and study hard. Your mom would want that, she said. I left for home to get fresh and to go to school. I reached the school and went straight to class. I was already exhausted and I couldn't entertain anything or anyone today. But how is it possible when Jeremy is there? He pat my shoulder and shouted, Hey, nerd! Which annoyed me immediately. Some days, even his face annoys me so much, knowing he's the least serious about anything. Had he not helped me yesterday, I would have smacked his face right now. What do you want, Jeremy? I asked. Nothing. Just checking up on you, nerd. Before I could say anything else, the teacher came in and started class. Today was off. I was unable to focus on any of the classes. Slowly, all the classes got over, and I decided to go straight to the hospital. On my way towards the gate, I saw the principal, Daniel, talking to someone, who looked like someone's parents. I then noticed Jeremy, walking towards them and standing next to them. It looked like something serious was going on. Maybe he's getting in trouble for all the annoying things he does. Without wasting another second, I left from there. As I reached, I found that mom was unconscious because of a high dose of medicine. My grandma was honest with me and told me that she is not doing great, but she will be fine in a few days. I held my hope high and prayed for her wellness. Again, my entire day went to the hospital. This continued for two more days, and before I could realize, I lost all my concentration from classes and got B grades in my tests. My brain went foggy. I was unable to understand what happened. I went to the teachers and they were shocked too, but they told me I did perform badly in the papers and there is nothing they can do about it. As I was walking out, I bumped my head into Mr. Daniel. I'm so sorry, sir, I didn't see you, I told him. He is usually a chill person as long as students behave. It's all right, Lucas. What's the matter? What are you doing in the faculty's room? He asked in a way that I told the truth. Come to my office, he said, and walked away. I got scared, thinking he might refuse to sign my recommendation letter or something worse. I followed him and he asked me to sit. Listen, kid, I know you're a good student and time is tough for you right now, but this is a competitive stage and colleges won't take any excuse before admitting you. What is said sounded harsh, but it was true. I can help you in this, but you'll have to do what I asked to, he said firmly, making me wonder what it could be that I could do for him. Yes, sir, I will do anything, I said, hoping I don't lose on anything. I want you to tutor Jeremy Vins. What? I asked in a high-pitched voice. Listen, kid, his parents are our school committee's members, and we can't fail them. They asked me to help their kid in studies because he's academically poor, and I know only you can help him. This will help you study, too. It's a win-win, trust me. He said it so surely, and it seemed like I had no other choice but to agree. I walked out of his office and got tripped on something. Hey, sir, said Jeremy, who had his feet stuck out, which I tripped. You knew about this? I asked him. Yeah, dude. I was the one who suggested your name to tutor me. Why? Why not, he said, and left. Why would he want to study in the first place? I left all the thoughts and went back to class. Today, after the realization hit me, I started to concentrate more in the class. After college ended, Jeremy came to me asking, Hey, my place or yours? For what? I asked. For tuition. Duh. Unless you don't want to. And I can tell the principal, and maybe he will cancel your recommendation letter, he said with a smirk. Ha, huh, I can't believe you'll actually do that. Makes me never want to see you again, I replied a bit stunned. But now you're bound to, so your place or mine? Let me choose your place, he said, and he picked my bag. I groaned. It was actually better to be at my place right now. That way I could feel more comfortable. When we reached my place, it took five minutes break time to get fresh. When I came out of the washroom, I saw Jeremy switching on some video games. Dude, we're here to study, I exclaimed. Really? Are you that of a nerd? Take some break, he said, passing me the controller while having one with himself. Let's have a match, he said, and I sat down next to him. Why did you even bother coming here then if you didn't plan on studying, I asked him genuinely. I have to. I gotta pretend that I'm studying and putting the effort, he said, making me wonder. Why pretend you hate studies that much? Nah, I don't hate it, but college is just not my thing, he said, still focused on the game. What is your thing then, I asked, curious. Soccer, he said, and I could sense a slight excitement in his voice. You play soccer? I was interested as I too love the game. Used to. I fell off my bike and broke my knee, so I had to stop it. Oh, well, you do seem like someone who gets into accidents often with those fancy bikes of yours, I said, chuckling. Hey, what do you mean? Those bikes are like my baby. Don't talk about them, he said, throwing his controller. I was getting interesting, and he was getting less annoying as I got to know him more. I was still wondering why he chose me to study and what made his parents worry so much about his studies. 
I mean, he is rich, so he can just get into his father's business. I asked him why he doesn't want to study, and he told, It's not that I hate studies, it's just that it's an obligation for me. My parents are forcefully making me join tuitions and whatnot so I can get into college, when they know my interests are not in college or continuing their business. They've always forced me into it, so I lost my interest in studies. For the first time, he made sense to me. Now I do believe that everything is not the same for everyone, and it's okay to be different. I didn't know after this conversation with him, my view of him would change. Everything he did makes sense to me now. I decided to be a good friend for him now. As time went by, we stopped playing and he left. I went back to my room and packed some stuff to go back to the hospital to get her back tomorrow morning. My mom came back home to a clean house, smelling like cookies because I baked her favorite caramel cookies. I love taking care of her because I know how much she struggled to get us to where we are today. The doorbell rang and I went to check, revealing Jeremy. What are you doing here? I asked him. I came to study, he said, doing air quotes. It's Sunday, I exclaimed. Whatever, he said, giving me his bag as he entered inside. He saw my mom sitting up on the sofa, and my mom looked at me, confused. Usually, I didn't bring friends home, so it was new for her as well. Mom, this is my friend Jeremy. I'm tutoring him for a while, I told her as she got up to greet him. It's all right, ma'am. Be seated. You must have just gotten out of the hospital. How are you? He asked. My mom, making me wonder how he knew about all this. I'm good, dear. Thank you. My mom replied, and we went upstairs. How did you know my mom was sick? You're easy to read, he said, and popped on my bed. I really want to take a nap. Please don't disturb me for another hour, he said, and slept. He's really the craziest man I have ever met, but also an interesting one. I laid next to him, so I was tired too. Ten minutes later, while I was dozing off, I felt a warm breeze hitting my neck. As I noticed, it was Jeremy, sleeping, really close to me. I tried pushing him back, but he jerked my hand off himself and slept. I continued staying there in that posting for another half hour until he woke up. When he realized his posting, he backed off quickly, and I cleared my throat to cut the awkwardness. You snore in your sleep, I said. What? I don't. Whatever you think, I said, and soon he took his bag and went down. He bid my mom goodbye and left. My mom asked me how come I never mentioned him to her, and I told her he just shifted to my school, which made my mom even curious that how come I had a friend so soon, and even started calling him to my place. I just told her it's for studies and left my house for some fresh air. Weeks went by with him coming to my house. Some days we both studied. Other days it was him, either sleeping at my house, chatting with my mom or just investigating all the objects in my room and asking millions of questions about it. But I don't want to complain. I was having a good time, and we both did better in our tests than before, as I shared my study material with him, and surprisingly, he remembered most of it. I started liking spending time with him, but he now gained his popularity more and more, and was usually surrounded by more people than before, which made him spend less time with me. I didn't really know if I could say anything to him, but one thing I know is he wasn't liking it much. I was growing back to being alone and studying. Maybe I was a nerd, and again, I'm turning into one. I like myself with him. The changes and easiness he got into me really changed my way of seeing the world. I walked in class and saw Jeremy with Jake and Lara. He usually hangs out with them nowadays. Hey nerd, going back to your books? He asked, and I just rolled my eyes at him. Hey, in case Mr. Daniel asks, please tell him that I'm studying with you. I have plans with them today, but I promise I'll study with you tomorrow. He pointed at his friends. I just nodded my head and agreed. He mouthed, thank you, and went back to his seat. Soon, teachers came in and classes got over. I left for home so I could focus on my college portfolio, as admissions were getting closer day by day. It was a good day to take my mind off Jeremy. Maybe I started feeling things for him, which were more than friendship. I didn't realize this until I started craving for his attention every day and waited for him to talk to me, but I decided to hold on to these feelings and have a better focus now. I started joining more clubs to gain more credits and attend some charities too. I got so busy with my daily activities that I barely got time to meet with Jeremy, whereas he was busy riding his bike or hanging out with his new friends. The day came when all the colleges came to our school to get forms and I felt ready. I knew I worked hard for this, but a part of me still felt empty, as I needed someone around me to share how I am feeling. Mr. Daniel signed my recommendation letter, and I got a few more credits, and felt everything on track, yet something in me was making me nervous. At times like this, all I wanted was Jeremy to be around, and joke all the time that always put me at ease. I didn't see him around, applying for any college. I don't know if his parents know about this, or he is doing something different, going against them. My turn came closer, and I felt soft touch on my lower back. Hey, it was a soft whisper that made me smile. What are you doing here? I asked him as he stood in front of me, but before he could answer, I heard my name being called. It's okay. I will be here when you come back. 
do well, he said, and I went. The interview felt longer than ever, with a lot of questions. For some I wasn't even prepared for, which made me nervous. I honestly have no idea how I did, but it's over now. He was right. When I left the room, he was still standing there, leaning on the wall, waiting for me. He walked up to me when he saw me coming out of the room. So you waited, I said. Yeah, it's your big day, and I want to be with you, he said, making me scoff. So today you want to be with me all of a sudden. Why? Your friends didn't come to school today? I taunted him. Even though I was happy he came, I was still hurt when he wasn't there. I felt like he showed me a new way to live life and then took it away from me. Why would you say that? I always want to be with you, Lucas. But you never are. You're always hanging out with your new friends, bunking classes, and on top of that, you're always asking me to cover for you. Do you know how shit I feel when you're not around? Without realizing, I blurted out, which made me shut up real quick. I noticed a small smile on his face. So you did enjoy it with me, and just pretended you didn't like me. That's not fair, he said, taking a step closer. I stayed away from you so you can focus on your studies, because I felt like I was wasting your time. Why did my absence bother you so much, he continued with a smirk on his face. It just did, because you're my friend, I said, hoping it didn't sound unreasonable. Oh really, just because I'm your friend? So I was simply keeping my hopes high, he said, pushing me to tell the truth. Okay, fine, I like you, more than friends do. But that doesn't change anything, does it? I said out loud. It doesn't change much, except I like you too. I always have, and right now, I'm the happiest man, he said, making my eyes go big. I couldn't believe what I heard, and I felt really good after so long. My heart sank after I heard his confession. I didn't hold myself back anymore and pressed my lips against his. It was the first kiss of my life, and it felt great, until I heard our names being called by a familiar voice. We broke the kiss, and the realization hit us that we were standing in front of the principal's office, and Mr. Daniel just called out our name. Run, Jeremy screamed, and he held my hands. We ran without knowing where to go. Everyone's eyes were on us. Some even took their cameras out. But all I could think was, I kissed Jeremy, the hottest boy on the campus. I felt above everyone who I crossed while running. Jeremy pushed me into an empty room and we hid ourselves at the back. Stay quiet, he said, keeping his fingers on my mouth. We both chuckled. Shh, shh, I said, as I saw someone's shadow by the window. After the shadow disappeared, he looked at me. That was adventurous, he said. He put his legs straight and made me sit on them while facing him. Were you hiding the side of yours from me? He said, making me chuckle. Why don't you find out on your own, I said, and he pulled me into a soft, deep kiss, which slowly turned into a rough makeout session. After a lot of kissing, I got off his legs and sat on the side. I asked him when he started liking me, and he said from the first few weeks of college, he became friends with me for fun, but he never knew this would happen. He asked me the same question. I told him I started liking him from the last few weeks, which was opposite of what he said, making me a bit embarrassed, but also happy that he liked me for so long. Then why did you never tell me that you liked me? I asked him, being curious. Because he does seem like an extrovert sometimes. Because I thought you were straight. I mean, you never gave me any hints that you were gay, he said, which does make sense. As if you gave me any hints, I said, showing some attitude. Duh, everyone in this college knows I'm gay, and now everyone knows that I'm dating you he said, making us both laugh, but also worried. What will happen now? Principal saw us kissing. He will definitely expel us, which means I won't be able to go to college. Now the mood became tense as I saw the bigger problem, but Jeremy was still calm. Don't worry, I will handle this, he said, as we stood up and walked out of the room. Go home, I'll see you in the evening for some tuitions, he said, air quoting, tuitions made me chuckle. As hours passed, I was getting tense. I was worried and waiting for some bad news, until the bell rang, revealing Jeremy. Hi, Luke, he said, pecking my lips as he entered the house. Okay, so when am I getting kicked out and how am I going to tell my mom this? I asked him, the first thing. He just laughed, making me angry. How is he not worried about anything? Well, no one is kicking you out, nor do you have to tell anything to your mom, he said. But how? Did you forget how influencing your boyfriend is? He said, making me shy at the boyfriend part. I have a boyfriend now. That's new and exciting. I just pulled some strings and showed my family's contribution to the school and his salary. Kicking us out would really do some harm to him, so he understood me well, he said, making me smirk. That's so powerful and hot. But what about me? I don't have any bribe or contribution to offer him and save myself, I said sitting next to him. But you have me. I got this, Luke. He won't harm you in any way, and nothing will happen to you or admission as well, he said, reassuring me, and I felt better. I asked him about his future as school is about to end and he hadn't applied for any college. He told me that he's planning on telling his father that he's not interested in taxes and trading, but bikes. 
I've applied at this company called Marcos. You might have heard of it, he said. Might have? Dude, every boy knows about Marcos, and everyone dreams to have their bikes. This is crazy. I was excited for him. He told me and he applied for them, but I haven't heard anything yet. Once he gets to know their reply, he will talk to his father about it. Hopefully then it'll be better. I decided to tell my mom about us as well. I don't know how she will react as I have never heard her opinion on homosexuality, and I don't want it to come out as a shock to her, which can make her sick, so it's better to wait. I should go now, he said, and I nodded. I pressed my lips against his to kiss him goodbye. A week later, I was laying on his arms when we heard his phone ring. He sat straight and picked up his phone. He looked nervous. I had no idea what was going on as he cut the class. His face remained straight. Who was that? I asked him. I got the job, he said with a straight face. What? That's great, Jeremy, I said, and he hugged me tightly. I was so happy. Seeing him this way, he looked so passionate and excited about it. I guess the time is here where we both go to the difficult part. He left my house to tell his parents and to make a decision, and it was my turn to do so as well. I walked into my mom's room where she was sitting on her bed and working on her laptop. Hey mom, can I talk to you about something? I said, sitting on the edge, feeling nervous. Yeah, go ahead, she said, closing her laptop. Mom, uh, I am dating, I told her. Oh, that's great, Lucas, tell me more. Uh, I'm dating Jeremy, I told her, and her face went blank, making me nervous. No, I can't allow that. That is a big no, she said, and my heart sank. I stayed there, still, tears forming in my eyes. Then I saw her laugh. I'm kidding. I already know you both are dating, and I have no problem with it at all, son. In fact, I'm happy for you, she said, making me breathe normally. I walked toward her and hugged her tightly. But how did you know? I asked, as it was still unclear to me. You're easy to read, Lucas, she said, making me pull out of the hug. Why does everyone keep saying that? I said, and Mom laughed. My phone rang and I got out of her room. It was Jeremy. Get ready. We're going on a date, he said firmly. Wait, okay, but what happened? He agreed to work for Marcos. In fact, he was happy that I got the job, he replied. That's amazing. I told my mom about us and she's happy for us too, I told him. So we worked out? Yes, we worked out. Conclusion. Lucas and Jeremy finished their school. Lucas got great marks, which opened up many scholarships for him. Whereas Jeremy managed to pass as well, which is an achievement for him. Soon, Lucas got calls from a few colleges and Jeremy started working as well. Jeremy had to shift because of his work, so Lucas decided to choose a college that will be closer to Jeremy and his mom, and to his luck, he got admission for it. This time, Lucas started hanging out at Jeremy's place on the weekends. Both of them also visit Maria in the holidays. Things worked out for both young boys. They found their love and passion against some odds. They both looked out at the future, hoping for the best to come. The End what do you think would happen if Jeremy's father did not approve of him working? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our rainbow force and stay wholesome.